I've been thinking quite a bit about Viktor Frankl this past week. He was a 20th century Jewish psychiatrist and Holocaust survivor. His wife, his father, his mother, and his brother were all killed in the concentration camps by the Nazis. Victor said, following his experience there, his own interior experience, and the experience of seeing the prisoners around him, he said that everything can be taken from us but one thing. The one thing that cannot be taken from us is our choosing our own attitude in any given set of circumstances. The one thing that cannot be taken from us is choosing our attitude in any given set of circumstances, choosing our own way of responding to whatever life throws at us. He said that it became clear that the sort of person the prisoner developed into was the result of an inner decision and not the result of camp influences alone. There was something even the Nazi soldiers could not touch unless you gave it away to them. What was really needed, he said, was a fundamental change in our attitude toward life. We ourselves had to learn and to teach the despairing men that it didn't really matter what we expected from life, but rather what life expected from us. We needed to stop asking about the meaning of life and instead to think of ourselves as those who are being questioned by life daily and hourly. Our answer must consist not in talk and meditation, but in right action and in right conduct. Life ultimately means taking the responsibility to find the right answer to its problems and to fulfill the tasks which it constantly sets for each individual. Now, I find that so very compelling and credible coming from a Holocaust survivor. When your sibling annoys you, well, life is questioning you. They cannot determine who you are or your response. You have that place within you that they cannot touch and which determines what type of person you develop into. When your spouse causes you sadness, when you find gossip and disappointment at work, life is questioning you. When you find success, life is questioning you. When there is loss, hardship, isolation, loneliness of old age, tragedy, and death, life is questioning you. Life questions us, which means that there is a deeper meaning to the fabric of our lives than a series of random events. Life is constantly probing us, and no one, not even Nazis, can determine who we are and prevent us from answering the mysteries, problems, and joys of life. I've thought of this frequently with the tragic events of the past 10 days here, and especially in light of the Passion account of Jesus Christ, which we just read, attempts were made to induce Jesus to compromise that interior place specific to humans, to compromise the humanity willed for each of us by his Father. In the midst of darkness, hate, envy, and infidelity, Christ remained free, with his humanity intact despite the inhumanity, the dogs from that psalm we heard surrounding him. The hardest questions this fallen world could ask, he answered. By so doing, Jesus gave us the touchstone, 
the pattern for answering the particular questions raised in each of our own lives so that we might take responsibility for finding the right answers to the problems presented to each of us, which must surely mean having recourse to him who died for all the unfulfilled tasks, also known as our sins.